Good morning to all of you. It's so great to see you to help to celebrate our 70th anniversary. I just wanted to give a matter of logistics. During uh, the baptism, we'll be back at the baptismal font. Anyone may join us uh, back there, but I ask that you stand behind me because we're going to be filming it for those of you who are joining us online. Otherwise, feel free to move in towards the uh, uh, aisle so you have a better view. We now, uh, unfortunately, our bishop has taken ill, and uh, Canon Gwen Lynch is here to read a message from her. Big voice. Big voice. Good morning. I am Canon Gwen Lynch. I'm Canon of the Ordinary in the Diocese of San Diego, which means I am the bishop's assistant, and I am here to share a message with you. Um, I'll read it and ask for Congratulations to St. David's on your 70th anniversary. I was so looking forward to being with you today, and I'm sorry I cannot be there due to a bad cold. And here's the important part, that has made me lose my voice, <laughs> among other things. My prayers are with you for this celebration day, and I look forward to visiting you all on my rescheduled date of October 20th. St. David's has a long history of worship, formation, and caring for the youngest and the least, as Jesus says to do in the gospel for today. Over your long history, you have blessed so many people of all ages and diversities with your love of Jesus and your commitment to follow him into the community that is yearning to know God's love. I pray that the next 70 years will be just as joyous and dedicated a time, and that St. David may grow and thrive as you answer God's call to you here in Panama. Congratulations and blessings. So I know she is brokenhearted to not be here, um, and on behalf of the entire diocesan staff, I offer prayers of thanksgiving and love for the mission and ministry here in this place. Love well, these many years and now in the Thank you. Sure, thank you, Pat. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of Holy Scripture. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of James. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder, and you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise you, Lord Christ.
In the name of the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today's gospel reading includes the second time that Jesus tells his disciples what was going to happen to him, namely being tortured, killed, and resurrected. The disciples still haven't gotten it, though. The reading said that they did not understand and were afraid to ask. Often we see ourselves in the stories of the Bible, and this story is one that I can definitely relate to. Has anyone ever refrained from asking a question because they thought they'd look stupid? It's so much easier to remain silent instead of taking the risk of making a fool of yourself. Yes, we've all heard that there are no dumb questions, but I know I haven't always had the gumption to ask. This happened pretty frequently in seminary. I'd hear something that I couldn't connect to while all the other students were nodding their heads, and I'd be thinking, what in the world is the professor talking about? Keeping silent was the easiest thing to do, hoping that I'd be able to determine the topic of discussion as more people talked about it. Sometimes it worked. Sometimes it didn't. There might be something else going on with the disciples, though. Maybe they don't say anything because they might not want to believe what Jesus told them about his faith would be true. The first time they heard it, maybe they thought they just didn't understand or Jesus was speaking in metaphor as he often did. The second time he said this, though, was different. Maybe they did understand the first time around but were afraid to ask. Jesus saying it the second time, though, might have been what they actually heard, that Jesus was going to suffer a horrible death and then be raised. Earlier in the gospel, Peter was rebuked by Jesus when he tried to deny the truth that Jesus was telling him about his pending death. Get behind me, Satan, was the forceful response by Jesus when Peter denied the truth. Do you think that any of the other disciples wanted to meet the same faith as Peter? Not me. Caroline M. Lewis is a professor at Luther Seminary. She said that monologue has become the preferred mechanism for speaking about faith nowadays. It is a much safer place to occupy than being in dialogue, which can be unpredictable. The way people talk about faith is less about the mysteries of faith and more about the mastery of convictions and doctrines and belief, she says. I know what she means. People of deep faith want to convince or even coerce you into accepting their faith. They seek immediate acceptance with little room for ambiguity. One reason, among many, why I'm an Episcopalian is that we are generally comfortable with ambiguity. We know that we don't know at all, and we are comfortable with asking questions, not accepting a list of answers. And we can give others space to arrive at their own conclusions. This type of faith where we can pigeonhole God to fit our own expectations isn't what the writer of Mark had in mind. The opening of the gospel says, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He opens with the truth about the nature of Jesus, that he is indeed the Son of God. By the time we reach today's reading in chapter 9, Jesus' end is quite near. This should have been the time when the disciples knew the truth about Jesus, but they weren't able to hear it. Paradoxically, the closer you come to hearing the truth, no matter how difficult it is, the harder it is to hear or to see it. Professor Lewis said, the most meaningful moments of vulnerability should come in the midst of truth. Yet, this is often when we shut up. We can't handle the truth. When we start asking questions, we come closer to the truth. These types of questions are hard, though, when we talk about faith issues. 
Somehow, we think that we should already know all the answers to all these questions. Our faith should be unwavering. Christians have been talking about Jesus and his true nature for over 2,000 years. Haven't all these questions already been asked and answered? No, they haven't. We all have our own questions as they relate to Jesus and his relationship to God. We have questions about how we relate to God. But these are the questions we dare not ask. It's so much easier not to ask the questions, just to stay silent. For if we venture forth, we might be transformed. Our lives wouldn't remain the same. Our relationships wouldn't remain the same. And that can be scary. There is a lot at stake. Brenda and MK have decided to ask questions and take the plunge. In preparation for their confirmation, we met several weeks along with Deacon Nancy and Joy to talk about the questions. But there are always more questions, and they know that. Unfortunately, the bishop has taken ill and can't be with us today to confirm them, and we've rescheduled that confirmation for a later date. I hope you all can join us then for a joyous celebration when Brenda and MK affirm their commitment to living the life of the disciple of Jesus. Professor Lewis talked about healthy complications. What she means by this is that taking the leap and engaging in dialogue is healthy, while at the same time recognizing that we could be complicating our lives by becoming more vulnerable. I was very proud at our last vestry meeting. We were able to discuss some difficult matters, and the members had different opinions about the issues, yet we were able to listen to these differences and ultimately vote on the matters at hand. Once a decision is made, it's the responsibility of the entire vestry to move forward together to see that the issues succeed. This is how a church community is meant to conduct itself, with genuine listening to each other and the Holy Spirit, then come together to work for a successful outcome. We expect people to have different opinions other than our own. And as I've said before, I have found that better decisions can be made when we listen to people who don't share our own opinions. Vestry members felt confident enough to ask questions that may have been uncomfortable, willing to accept healthy complications. Being a disciple of Jesus carries risks, but I hope you'll agree with me that the risks are worth it. Relationships built on dialogue are what we are called to engage in. The safe and comfortable route is not asking questions. For those of you with children, I'm sure you'll agree with me that small children don't hesitate to ask all sorts of questions. Nothing is off limits. It's only after they grow up a bit they come to learn about a safer way to navigate life. Sit in the back of the class. Keep your head down. Don't look at the teacher. Maybe this is why Jesus used the example of a child when trying to teach the disciples about what true discipleship means. It's not deciding who is the greatest. Actually, it's quite the opposite. Church is a place where we can open up to each other, becoming vulnerable in the process. Scary as it may be, it is what we are called to do. It took the disciples a while to learn about the, to learn about the truth of Jesus. So we're in good company if we think we are still exploring our relationship with God. Take the chance to ask the questions that are on your mind. Amen. I'd like to invite the baptismal candidates and their sponsors to join me at the font. And please stand up, turn around.
Does that line come in? Okay. Oh, there they go. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Brenda Mimo to receive the sacrament of baptism. Do you desire to be baptized? Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? We will with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? We will with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in God's grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey God as your Lord? In the middle of page 8, I ask all of you, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support these persons in their life in Christ? We Let us join with those who are committing themselves to Christ and renew our own baptismal covenant. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in God, the Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Let us now pray for Brenda Milo and Adeline Wong, who are to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver them, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open their hearts to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill them with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep them in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach them to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send them into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring them to the fullest of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. I would invite anyone who would like to join us at the font to gather uh, 
behind, uh, behind the door, especially the children who are here, please join us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We like to give God thanks and prayers. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it your Son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, for, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Brenda? I baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, look down. I look baptize down. you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay. Here. <laughs> Here. I drenched you, didn't I? Okay. There you go. Brenda, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. Adeline, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Receive the light of Christ as a sign that you have passed from darkness into light. Shine as his light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We receive you into the household of God. Confess the faith of Christ crucified. Proclaim his resurrection. And share with us in his eternal priesthood. Now we can clap. Okay. okay, please take your seats. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs> peace be with you.
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Good to have you here. Peace be with you. Is there anyone who is celebrating a birthday or anniversary this coming week? No one? That's unusual. Okay. Well, I just have two... Oh. Birthdays. I thought we might have some birthdays. Join us saying the birthday prayer found at the bottom of page 13. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up when they fall. And in their hearts may your peace which passes understanding Abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Just two short announcements. Uh, after the uh, postlude, I'm asking you to please stay in your seats because we are ga- going to gather together in order to have a photo of the entire crowd in front of the church. So we have a photographer set up. So I'll invite you to come out and we'll arrange you how we need to. But we really would like to have you join us in this uh, photograph. The uh, other thing I wanted to mention, it's in addition to uh, today's service, we're going to have a litany for our 70th anniversary. Those are the inserts that you see. So that will come right after the post-communion prayer and before the blessing. And uh, Father Leaf will be uh, leading that. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship.
for his body broken we celebrate. For the words spoken we celebrate. For the feasting at his table, by his grace we are able to celebrate. be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you At your command all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Again and again you called us to return, through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn.
So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, Leah, Rachel, Bilha and Zilpah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your Church gives honor and glory and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body Christ, the of heaven. 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 Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. 
the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The 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 blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. 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 Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Christ, the, bread of heaven. the blood Christ, of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood 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 of Christ, the cup of salvation. Thank you. 
For those of you who are worshiping with us online, we offer a prayer for spiritual communion. Lord Jesus, you give us yourself in the bread and wine of communion that becomes your body and blood. Grant that we may receive you spiritually today in our hearts, minds, and souls, and that we may have confidence in your promise to be with us always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us, us with, with the spiritual food of the most precious blood and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God. Lord, hear our prayer. For your love and goodness, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who seek faith in our neighborhoods, we discover God, we discover the good news here, in their own language and in their own place. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Oh, <laughs> 
peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us forever. Amen. Amen. Verse 2. <laughs> For us that was for us before is holy God and our soul for us to be the Follow the teacher who came to serve and not to be served. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks. Thanks.